The following video is sponsored by 3i. I've got with me here the world's first water recycling all-in-one robot mopping vacuum cleaner and this is from a company called 3i. The model is the S10 Ultra. So how it does it is it does have a dehumidifier built into it. That produces our clean water. But it also is the world's first to recycle that water too. So wastewater is recycled. They separate the solids. We get back that water and the solids will go into the internal dustbin. No wastewater tank. It's only the clean water tank here we have at the front. Now it has dirt sense and what this is is a green light and using an AI algorithm. It's very advanced. It can detect dirt on the floor and even re-clean spots, which is great. And it's got apex vision which is time of flight and also LiDAR for the navigation, AI obstacle avoidance that I'll be testing out. The suction performance is 13,000 PA, so it is very powerful. The main brush is also tangle free because it does have a dual anti-tangling system. So there are dual combs in there to ensure that no annoying hair is going to be stuck in the main brushes. And then we have a roller mop, which has the edge ultra reach so it gets right to the edges and it mops at 330 rpm and it's a self-cleaning mop as well so it goes along cleaning itself and then the wastewater is collected and converted again and reused as i mentioned the battery capacity well this is 5200 milliamp hours there is of course an application i'll be showing you all of that and what the s10 ultra from 3i is all about in this video so we have our cleaning solution, a user manual, a carbon filter, and then a cleaning tool for the main brush. So it's the first ever water recycle system out of a robot vacuum station here. So it makes its own water from the dehumidifier. It also recycles the wastewater. And what it will do is separate the solids from the wastewater and filter that and recycle that, ionize that wastewater and put it back in the main tank to be used again. And then the dirty parts, the solids, they just go in the dust bag. It's located right here, very easy to get to. So you simply pull on the bottom and then you find our dust bag. Now it's 2.5 liters and it can hold up to 60 days of debris. The S10 Ultra all-in-one station is where it will go to dry the mops so they will not smell, grow mildew or anything like that. Refill its water and also empty out that wastewater. It's all done here and of course charge it. And you can remove this bottom portion, just pull up on these two tabs. That does come out for maintenance. So this lid does lift up here where you can gain access to where the water tank is to remove it. There's some buttons to manually control it on the side so you don't always need to use the app which is handy. The cleaning solution that is installed on the left here, there's a little button, you press that and it pops open and that's where you install it. This is our clean water tank, so there is a little release here on the lid, so you just need to push that in, it opens up and you'll find that is where our carbon filter goes right there. So the water that's in this, so far what I've managed to get, this is overnight, is all just from the dehumidifier. That's its own water that it's made itself so you don't have to fill it up. So there is a filter on the back of it. This is for the dehumidifier part that you eventually will need to change, but the app will let you know when. Then for the navigation, it is using ultra long range time of flight LADAR, 3D slam technology and dual line obstacle avoidance. And yes, you can issue voice commands to it because it does have Google Assistant and Alexa support built in. S10 Ultra's internal dustbin is easily accessible. Not that you really need to go here because it already has auto empty, right? But if you do need to, you can just remove the top cover. It's held in place by magnets and here we have that dustbin and if you just press in on the tab here, you're able to remove it. So the wastewater tank is located at the rear of it. This is what it will empty out into the auto clean all-in-one station that it has. Now, now and then, of course, you will have to get some of the debris that builds up inside this because it's constantly cleaning that roller mop that it does have. So pinching either side, you can simply just pull this out like so. It comes right out. And you can see that we have the empty nozzle is located right there. And this is the refill nozzle. And we have the charging contacts there either side. When it does detect carpet, it'll lift the mop up eight millimeters and it can handle climbs of 25 millimeters and it has a 15 degree climbing ability. 
And it's dual side sweeper brushes here are designed specifically to bring in the contents to the main brush here, but also not get hair tangled in them. 360 degree wheel at the front, carpet detection sensor, and then the sensors along the side do detect falls. So it knows that it has a stair in front of it or stairwell and won't fall down that. Pretty standard. Let's get on to, of course, how it works and my thoughts on it. So Apex Vision, that it's using a depth time of flight and LiDAR system. It is very good at getting around. It sees where it needs to go and it will go around chairs. It'll go, of course, and clean around the edges of everything and under beds. Now, the obstacle avoidance, I want to get onto that at the start here because I found it to be very good. And as you can see now that it went around a child's toy, a sock, a cable and a shoe, no problems. Now there's a lot of the robot vacuums that I test out, the obstacle avoidance, uh, let's face it, some of them are hopeless, that they will end up just riding straight into something and end up eating the cable. Now that didn't happen, it saw everything there, and occasionally it would like bump into the cable a little bit, but it didn't end up getting stuck in the main roller, and it, that is the main thing. So the obstacle avoidance does work exceptionally well with our S10 Ultra. Now the mopping performance is really one of the key areas of why you would go for a robot vacuum cleaner all-in-one system like this. Now it has their edge, ultra edge cleaning and that means it gets that roller in right against the walls and I did test this out in the process of cleaning my house and I can confirm that it does seem to work quite well. Now there's also dirt sense, so when it's going around and detects any areas if you're using the AI clean mode and it discovers a bit of a stain or something that's quite stubborn, it will go over this again. And this is a very handy feature to have of course, if there is one area that's a little bit more stubborn, then it will clean this. Now with my cleaning, which is my mop test here, I did just spill some coffee on the ground with a bit of dirt mixed into it and I set the S10 Ultra at it. So you can see here that on the first pass, that yes, it did spread it a little bit, but those rollers were so good at just getting all of that straight away and just dealing with it. So it was going straight into its waste tank, all of that coffee, that dirt and whatnot. And on the, the final clean here, the results, you can see that it is very good. So it did a great mopping job here. Now there's a couple of little specks. You can see those tiny little black dots. Those are in fact chips in the tiles. So of course it couldn't get that, but excellent mopping performance from the S10 Ultra. And then the vacuuming test that I do, this is on a rug that I laid down some cat hair, some cereal, there was some dust too as well, and long human hair, which is always a bit of a problem, but we have the anti-tangle system with this. So there's a dual comb set up that is supposed to stop and the hair getting tangled. And we'll first do the clean test and see the results. You can see that it's doing really well. Now 13,000 PA, is how powerful it is. And I'll give you a sample of what it sounds like when it's in action because it's rather quiet for this kind of suction performance, as you hear. So that's not bad at all. So when it was cleaning my little test here, you can see the first pass that it didn't quite get everything. It left a couple of little bits of cereal and speeding this up, of course, this playback speed is between 200 and 300%. So it has been sped up quite a bit there. You can see now in the second pass that it got almost everything. There was just one little speck of cornflakes, some cereal that it did leave behind, which is pretty impressive. And it does have, of course, the bristles with that roller. And looking at it, I cannot see any hairs at all that are stuck in there and attached. So it looks like it's doing a good job. So it's collected all that debris from the carpet, very good performance. But what about the auto empty feature that does have? Of course, this all-in-one station is gonna suck out that content. So this is the before, you can see it's full of hair. So that's where all the hair's gone. It's not stuck in the brush, but as it's in the dustbin where you want it to be. You can see the dust and of course those cornflakes. And now the after, but before I show you the after results, let's have a listen to how loud it is when it does empty out that dustbin, which by the way, the emptying process here, that suction performance is 17,000 PA, which is also very high. Start collecting dust. So you can hear it, it is a little loud. That does just sound like someone turning on a normal vacuum cleaner when it empties out the internal dustbin 
to the one that we have here in the all-in-one station. And the results of that dustbin, you can see that it got almost everything but around where the fine mesh filter is, the first layer within that internal dustbin of the robot vacuum cleaner, the S10 Ultra. You see there's just a few little bits left and there are a couple of hairs that seem to have got caught on the exit vent where it sucks everything out. But overall, not too bad on the emptying process. And so once it's done all of its mopping and gone around the house and done its clean, the mop is already basically self-cleaning itself. So it doesn't have to go back here and scrub it or really do anything. What it's going to do is take the wastewater from this, add new water, but take out that wastewater and then recycle it, of course, and proceed to dry the mop too. So we don't have to worry about a damp mop sitting in there that's later possibly going to grow mold or mildew or some odors and smells. It's not going to happen too. And, and by the way, the mop does auto lift up. That's eight millimeters as I showed you when you looked at the design of it, just in case you forgot that depending on your mats and your carpets, you can set it to auto lift and it will go over and increase the suction performance over the mats or just avoid, avoid mats and carpets completely if you wanted. And here is Three Eyes app. And this here I just got from the QR codes on the box. You can get it from the instructions or the machine itself. And you can see the map here. So it does make a 3D map if you want that. You also have a 2D one and it will identify furniture. So I can see right here, I've got the bed. You have uh, some table and chairs there a sofa and whatnot, and it will tell you where it's been. And even if it does see some stains, it will show those two as well. So you have the AI auto mode right there. You have your different zones, your different, uh, as you can see, to mop, if you wanted to change that to mop vacuum, but in AI mode, you cannot. And you have the different settings for the power of the vacuum. So the strong mode, the maximum is that 13,000 PA. It's very obvious there that that's to start and return it. So pretty self-explanatory. If you go in here, you can see the cleaning records. You get the notifications and the more interesting settings here, I think uh, these ones here. So the station settings. So if you didn't want the lighting on, there's LED lights within it, you can disable that. The water production by air. If you're gonna have this close to someone's bedroom and you probably wanna turn this off, but you can also have a do not disturb mode as well so it's not making any noise. But this is probably the easiest way to do that. And you can select the humidity level, that range that you want it to start working. So you don't want it to dry the air out perhaps too much then you have that option. Now it does support multi-maps, different floor levels. You're able to configure that. And most of the settings are really quite straightforward. The firmware updates, you can set no-go zones. There's a lot in here uh, without me going on too much about the application that it pretty much covers all the bases and what you'd expect out of an application for a very advanced robot vacuum cleaner. It is basically all there. And there is Google Assistant and Alexa support too with this. So you can issue it voice commands and just to tell it to start cleaning or mop and it will be able to do that. So all up, this is a very advanced all-in-one unit here. And I love the fact that I don't have any wastewater to empty. It doubles as a dehumidifier, which is excellent. If you do live in a damp climate up in the mountains like I do in winter especially, this is going to be pretty handy to produce its own water but also keep the room quite dry. The application is fully featured. The mopping performance is great. It has the 13,000 PA cleaning and we have the ultra edge mopping too as well, the ultra reach so it can get in really close and it doesn't tangle up with here, which is a big problem with a lot of these robot vacuum cleaners. The downside to it is, you probably guessed this one, having a dehumidifier means it's got the compressor in there and it does make a bit of noise. So this is not a all-in-one robot vacuum station to have in someone's room because it will just be a little bit too noisy. For that, you'd have to disable it and turn it off. But for a living room, I think it is going to be fine. So thank you so much for watching my video here on the 3i S10 Ultra all-in-one water recycling robot vacuum mopping cleaner.